Hello everyone and welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today here in the city of the Jaguar and the Winged Goat. Apparently it's the things that were marked over there and also there was a tiger or something over here but we are gonna explore, continue to explore the high city as we were here before. There's danger in here and we're probably gonna, well, end up rewinding to try and prevent much... Uh, very many things from happening to us. Let's see, you head upwards towards the cliff face, jumping over cracks in the ground and then clambering from roof of one building to the gaping doorway of the next. Mosaics in the floor and painted walls speak of great wealth, but their patterns can no longer be discerned. Uh, I'm gonna search closely. You search over every corner and look through every window and crack, but you find nothing. It seems that whoever that when whoever lived here left, they took everything they could carry with them. On the highest street above the city, you find a house, perhaps the grandest so far, whose stones are daubed in bright red paint. And I'm gonna go inside. You look inside the walls of the red painted house. Nothing remains, of course, just the outlines in the stone of, of a small room with a fire pit at the back. Something white lies in the hearth. Perhaps the remains of some... Something long since burned? You go over to the fireplace, and what looks uh, and what looks at first like discarded dice turns out to be a set of teeth. They turn you turn them over in your hands, trying to place what creature they are from. Okay, so we have a spell uh, for teeth that we don't have. So the serpent ring, we have that. We have used that before. Actually, well, we rewinded after that, so we don't have that. We have the goblin's tooth and we have the giant's tooth. It could be goblins, but it could also be a rock demon. Well, let's let's say it's a rock demon. Can I say it's a rock demon? Tell me, tell me I can... Nah. Well, let's go with the goblin. Goblin? No, they are curved and cruel. They lack the rough edges of a goblin's tooth. Uh, what about a snatter cat? Snatter cat, of course. They have the curved talon-like profile of a big cat's tooth. You have found three for what use they are. Well, take them. Oh, I had those before as well, didn't I? What? Oh, these things are... Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think I... Did I get... Oh, the fox. We got one of the fire fox, yeah. You place them into your pack. Perhaps they will be useful f to you at some point. Hmm. Well, further on, I guess. You continue along the curving street until you pass a large doorway in the surprisingly intact ruins of a hall. Lying in the doorway is what looks like a massive oversized finger. A dead giant, perhaps? If so, you might be able to acquire a few more precious teeth to add to your collection. You follow the line of the finger inside the building, along the length of the arm that disappears under a pile of rubble and stones. Now, we have killed, we have dispatched the Earth Serpent uh, already, so everything is good on that front. I don't think it's gonna be a serpent. Um, this might be a dangerous thing here, actually. This might be the giant that destroyed the city. I'm gonna rewind here. I'm gonna hurry on. But I wanna see. I wanna see the giant. I wanna see the giant! Let's then bury the harm and see what happens. You go over to the rubble and begin to haul it away. Once you have cleared a few rocks, you begin to see the first wisps of thick hair from the giant's beard underneath the stone. If he is in fact dead, he cannot have died too long ago. You keep working, removing stones with an aim to reach the giant's lower jaw, but after removing a, f a flap a flat slab of stone from across his mouth, you are struck by a hot, wet blast of breath. The giant is not dead at all. He is sleeping. Oh, can I fight him? I think so. Um, so let's see. We have the big, of course, it's gonna turn us into a giant. We have the Raz, which is gonna sharpen the blade. Nah, don't, don't really need that razor. I guess it would be for Raz. We have the rock here that's gonna turn me into stone, uh, which probably doesn't really necessarily mean anything good. We have the walk and the wall. Uh, I think that's how it goes, so I don't really care for that. And uh, we have... Okay. So yeah, I, th I think I'm gonna go with a big because it's usually pretty good, and uh, let's go with that. Oh! You weave the enchantment, quickly swelling to the height of a tree. But your spell casting has clearly agitated the creature. It wakes instantly, roaring to its feet, throwing aside the rest of the stone that has fallen on its on it during its sleep the, and grabbing a club from nearby. Where? Where'd you get the club? Anyway, we're gonna defend ourselves. So this thing, I don't know what it's gonna do. It's got this is a, a pretty even even fight. It's got the same attack as I do, uh, I think. So uh, what I'll do is uh, it's. I'm gonna defend. Ah, that was bad. That was bad. With a roar that shakes the ruin, the giant swings its club and comes for you. Determined to crack open your bones, you raise your sword to recover your 
to cover your enormous body as he tries to push you back with his great hand. You are mostly unhurt. His stupid eyes are watching you closely, not wanting to take a risk. So, um, I'm gonna go with a 3.5 over here. There it is. Yeah, he's now learning. Lumbering in, you move in, aiming to trap the giant against the far wall of the street, teasing the giant with a passing blow, wearing him down. He deflects as well as he can. He doubles, he doubles over in pain. So I think I'm gonna go with a 5.1 over here. Yeah, he's going a little bit stronger than that, that's okay. You strike again, stamping forward, you aim for his heart. The giant parries slowly, the giant crumbles, stumbles suddenly, he's weakening. Okay, let's go with a 4.1, 4.2. Ah, I needed more, come on! Oh boy. You attempt an attack and suffer for it. The giant kicks out with one foot. You are caught off balance and used to your oversized body. His eyes follow your moving movements cautiously. There it is. That that one is telling. Hefting your sword, you move forward. Grabbing a fistful of rock, you throw it to the monster's eye. The giant ducks clumsily. The giant's eye are eyes are bloodshot and uh, he is moving much slower now. Smelling your fear, he stumps on the ground with one enormous growling. Defend. I didn't need that. Really didn't need that. You drop down, protecting yourself as best you can as the giant swipes its terrible club. You step back. You are largely unscathed. His team witted eyes are watching you closely. And now he dies. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, decent dueling. Not that bad. Lumbering in, you move in, readying a massive blow that could part stone. You stomp forward, then your sword slips between the giant's ribs and falls, gasping his last in a noise like a gushing waterfall. You stagger back, wiping the sweat from your brow and regarding the fallen creature. It is far from its Shamutanti home. It must have become lost out, out here, in which case it has been dying a long time. And I'm gonna take its teeth. You go to remove the giant's teeth, but before you can get your sword into the lower gum, the body of the creature begins to shrink by almost a, a hand span. A moment later, it shrinks again. Uh, I'm gonna pay for this, but let's see. You hurry over, aiming to work more kick quickly, and have time to pry loose one tooth before the creature's mouth has shrunk to a normal human size, and uh, are, you are able you are unable to fit the blade of your sword into its mouth. But the tooth on the f on the floor has shrunk as well. Soon you are you are lying by a dead body, holding one of its incisor teeth in your hand. I'm gonna keep the tooth, but I wanted to look at the corpse. You shove the, your tooth into your pouch, though it is a macabre souvenir for this poor wretch. Then you leave the body for whatever wild beast inhabits these ruins at night. Your loop of uh, your loop of the upper city is finished. Gradually, you shrink back down to your normal size. The sun is beginning to lower, and the air begins to cool. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go to the tower, and that way I am gonna be able to regain my health. <clears throat> I hope. You follow the line of, of broken street until you reach the base of the tower. Somehow, amidst all the leveled buildings, its walls stand firm. Yep. We're gonna enter. We're probably gonna have to fight something. The door opens easily. Oh, that's not a good thing. The inside of the tower is much like the others you have seen, except that perhaps it was once decorated. The walls are hung with rotten strings and are set with empty candle bracket. Brackets? Yeah, can, okay, yeah. You you could go up to the tower or back out into the street. I can't really cast a spell, though, so let's just go there. This tower also has a brass cylinder set into its center with a glowing crystal at its heart. From here, the plan of the old city is quite clear. Winding streets and blocks leading towards and then up the cliff face. Though it has all been scrubbed clear, the stain of human habitation still remains. What stain? It's it's the, the, the painting. Don't tell me you're also against tattoos. Hmm. Anyway, uh... <laughs> I don't have a tattoos, by the way. Although I have nothing against them. Um, so let's see. Look at the view. Activate the beacon. Let's activate the beacon. This tower seems to be broken. You are forced to give it a kick before the beam be begins to, chi to shine. Okay. That actually was a little bit of a scare for a little while. Um, so it doesn't let me see a whole lot of things. Although that is going to be all, all that I want right there. Is that uh, port city? That's perfect. And that's, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the port right there. Okay, we're gonna be good here. I think this is the best one that goes there. Is that a plane? <laughs> that thing looks like a plane to me for, for some reason. Uh, yeah, that that this little thing was not there in the past, so there it is. Um, so yeah, let's explore the city and see what it is all about. I think this is gonna be good. Yeah. And full health. It seems incredible that, any, that anyone should have built these towers with their curious lanterns. Indeed, you cannot help but wonder what these towers did originally. What appeared in the lands beneath the beam when the land was everywhere lush and green. Ooh, that's... I th 
I think the future appeared. When the light touches you, you feel suddenly much better. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, let's climb down. Okay. And I could have looked at the view, but uh, I'm probably going to need to come back up here anyway, so. You head off into the city once more. The sun is sinking. It will be dark soon. The streets are suddenly alive with activity. People roam the streets, calling to one another and talking. Musicians stand on the street corners, playing lively jigs uh, to passers-by. A nearby building pumps yellow tin tinged smoke into the air. You make your way along the busy, bustling streets, marveling at all the people. Um, <clears throat> they do not realize they are ghosts. What? They're not ghosts! They're alive! Otherwise, you are also a ghost. Because you are also dead in the future. They're alive. We're just seeing the past. It's different. What is th anyway, it's a thriving, a thriving hub. And out here, in the depths of the backlands, knowledge of such a city has been long lost. It has never been mentioned in Analand. Really? Huh. Hmm. So the high city we go. And uh, we're probably going to see what we saw before. You follow the winding, climbing, st stepped streets into the upper reaches of the city. Low hovels and clustered, dw clustered dwellings are replaced by larger buildings, mansions, palaces, and central offices. You pass a familiar building daubed in red paint with two doors. Above one door is a sign with a picture of a fanged tooth. Above the other is a metal implement that looks like a small pair of tongues. Uh... Let's go with the tongued door first. You open the door to find it leads into a wide hall, which uh, the other side door, the other door also opens onto. In a large chair at the one end sits a man with a tight-fitting leather cap. On a low table at uh, his elbow rests uh, an array of metal implements. He stands as you enter. This is a tooth removal guy. Why would you have teeth in your fireplace, though? Huh. Greetings, declares the merchant. Are you here to buy or to sell? A strange question, since there appears to be nothing on sale, unless the goods are all behind the curtain that covers the black wall. Uh, so what's your trade? You ask, puzzled. He seems surprised. You didn't see the sign? Are you a dentist? He winces. <laughs> that is a nasty word for it, he declares stiffly. It is as though I called you a conjurer. I, he shuffles a few documents on a low table to, by his arm. But I do take it, then. You are simply not in the market for teeth? Uh... Well, uh, I have... Uh, what kinds do you sell? I have a few rarities in my possession today. A genuine Firefox tooth. Two Snatica teeth and uh, my prized possession. The tooth of a rock demon. Oh, really? How much for the rock demon? Ah, he replies with a gleam. You are a man of taste, I see. Squicks. Really? Squicks? What? Yeah. He snaps his finger and a stooped figure appears from the back, carrying an enormous crystal rock. It is clearly extremely heavy. In a perfect condition, as you can see, the man replies, virtually flawless. Yours for a mere 32 gold pieces. The rock demon is probably gonna be good. Let's examine it first. Look it over. The tooth shape is indistinct. Ridges and whorls in a crystal cube. But the sense of magic surrounding it is palpable. This is indeed a rock demon tooth, as used in the Zob spell. Uh, let's, well, let's buy it. You count out your money, but the merchant catches your hand. Please, before you part with all gold, are you sure? Carrying such a large item can be most inconvenient. How inconvenient? Well, it's very big and very heavy, he assures you. Most tiring. Uh, yeah, let's get it. <gasps> it took away my stamina? It's probably going to give it back when I use it, so it's not that bad. Huh. Well, it's better than just taking penalties every once in a while. Yeah, that's fine. You shake your head. That does not trouble me, I'll say. Well, very well. Taking... Talk, taking your gold, he gestures to Squeaks to place the tooth in your arms. You see his point as soon as Squeaks steps back. It is enormously heavy, and uh, though it will fit it in your pack, it will wear you out considerably to be carrying around. Well, let's put it in my pack. Smiling through greeted teeth, you place the rock into your pack, and then quickly adjust your stance to avoid toppling over backwards. The merchant nods. I wish you well with it. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you very much. You close your pack and, you, and uh, your money pouch. He nods. Uh, can I cast a spell? Hmm. Huh. You open your arms to raise a spell, but the merchant catches your arm. Try if you must, he says, but we have a minimite chained up in the back room. We don't want people testing out the merchandise in the shop, you understand? Oh. Oh, that's okay then. I have something to sell. Excellent, he leans forward keenly. Your own teeth, or uh, those of others? You would buy my teeth? I'm not gonna do that. Um, I have creature's teeth to sell. And from what creature? A human. Hmm. Is that a good idea? Huh. 
You pull out a tooth, but the salesman shakes his head. My apologies, I cannot buy teeth from humans without knowing their stock and character. Humans in the wild are simply too, um, unreliable. He smiles condescendingly at you. Anything else? Uh, well, we do have the Firefox tooth. Um, and the Snyder Cat teeth as well. He does seem to, uh, what are those for? Are those magical items? Uh, Gilhorn? I don't think they are. The giant's tooth, I have a single one, and I think the goblin's tooth, e the tooth is as well very important. If I, can, if I can find it, of course. And fools, how many do I have? It's not here, for some reason. Uh, goblin message? No, 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 no. Uh, human, oh, three Snatacat's teeth. I don't think I need those, so I'm gonna sell them and get a little bit of money. Uh, so Snatacat, please. He, his eyes light up. A most useful tooth indeed, he explains, and very hard to come by. I will give you eight gold pieces per tooth. I hope that is acceptable. Um, that's too little. Ten then, but I cannot go higher. Okay, sell two. You take out two teeth and hand them over. The merchant whistles for a lackey who takes them into a back room and returns with twenty gold pieces. But why are they... Why are they good? What about the Firefox? He considers for a moment, sucking at his cheeks, then shakes his head. I have one already, and they do not sell well, he replies. Firefoxes are admittedly of limited use. Most people prefer a simple fire spell to snapping a tooth. Uh, he shrugs apologetically. No thanks. What about the giant one? Uh, rare, but not so rare. Three gold pieces each. But I will only buy two. Nah, I'm not gonna sell you any. Um, let's buy... Uh, do I want... <clears throat> I can buy another Rock Demon Tooth? No. You move a l Okay, so you peruse this stock once more, but do not find anything to buy. There is nothing more to, to do here. With a final nod to the man, you return to the street. You move along, the streets are quieter here with fewer passers-by, but there are still no guards, no soldiers, no priests, no children playing. It is as though this whole city is purely a place of workers and foremen. A mining town, perhaps. Huh, that's actually kind of interesting. Um, so, uh, what I'll do... No, not this one. I want to check if I have the Rock Demon Tooth. It should be down here. Uh, no, not here. What about here? It's not here either. Okay, because it's kind of weird that I, I could buy that again, and I'm kind of afraid that for some reason... It didn't... I don't know. Let's just go over here. It's going to tell me if I... Oh, I, there it is. Yeah, I have it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So the main square or the alleys. Let's go to the main square, and then uh, what is that? No, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I can't. I can't fall back. <clears throat> you stop in a plaza. A woman passes by, wearing a wrapped headscarf and carrying what looks like a basket of rocks. Greetings. Yeah, I am new to this city. She nods quickly. Then you are welcome. I'm sure. She seems in a hurry to move on. No doubt her basket is heavy. Uh, can I carry that for you? Uh, you ask. Most assuredly not, she exclaims. I would not be doing my work if I gave it away. She takes a wary step backwards, almost stumbling over her weight. Um, I would not tell anyone, you assure her. She pales and steps back. The Archmaid sees all, she replies. And I am mo I'm a most honest woman, I assure you of that. Uh, what do you mean? Do you mean... Hmm. So, um... Wh how, hmm. What do you know of the Seven Serpents? Nothing, she replies, and it is clear she is being quite honest. What's the name of this city? This is Tinpang, of course, she asks, looking at you strangely. But surely, wherever you are from, you heard of us? Oh, uh, my home is far away, you tell her. She smiles thinly, but is clearly puzzled by your answer. We are the primary city serving the fortress, she says. We live under eternal protection. From what? Everything, she shrugs. She pulls her scarf tighter. Forgive me, but I must do my work. With that, she scurries da away down the street and disappears. I wonder if I could have cast a spell. So that one is for the tower. When I look down there, I'm going to be able to see what the rest of this, uh, if there's anything over there for us to see. So I'm just going to go over here to the alleys. It's now nighttime. That's going to be fine. You take a turn down the narrower alleys of the city, picking your way between sleeping dogs and rubbish heaps, until suddenly a tiny hand reaches out to catch your ankle. Knew you were there, see? Uh, groans a voice. Tell you more if you want. Uh, Who's there? No reason you should know me. You still cannot see the speaker, but the tiny hand seems to emerge from a pile of rotting vegetables. Hmm. <clears throat> what are you doing here? Or there, I mean. I see you can... I see you see I see you, the voice replies cheerfully. For one gold piece, I'll tell you your fortune. How's that? Uh, well, I, I have no gold. The voice hums and has to itself. Didn't see that, it admits finally. Well, when you see the still sleeping cat, you'll be sorry. What cat? One gold piece, the voice replies. I make my own fortune. 
you reply firmly. And and keep it, seems like, the voice grumbles. Well, when you see the still sleeping cat, you'll be sorry. Okay, so I will be sorry. But I've, I've talked to the Shem. But that's not the still sleeping cat. I wonder... So it's the Jaguar, right? Okay. It, I... I'm gonna pay. You toss a gold... The game is telling me too many things to, to go for that. You toss a gold piece into the pile of garbage, and the voice makes a noise which sounds like swallowing. Liar, it adds. Then all falls quiet. Liar. Yeah, because I said I didn't have that. I actually didn't mean to click that. I Did I mean to click that? Because I said that. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of a random choice, to be honest. Let's demand my fortune. Tell me my fortune, you demand. Don't fret, I'm thinking, the voice replies. I can't think and eat, is all. Okay. There, I see it now, the voice declares finally. I see a ball of flame lit near the still sleeping cat. Oh, it's the serpent. The sun serpent? What does it mean? I have no idea, the voice replies, but understand this. I am never wrong. Rarely, at least. Okay. You walk away down the alley. The still sleeping cat. What the hell does that even mean? The smoldering building. There's a building over there. Let me go there. There it is. You approach the smoldering building from... Uh, uh, smoldering building. From inside, there comes a... Cacophony of sound, crashing and booming, as though a rock demon was inside, fighting against its, its chains. Let's go inside, it's not gonna be a rock demon. You move to push open the heavy door, or wooden door, when a small boy grabs your arm. Are you supposed to be inside, he asks? Yeah. You lie. I thought so, he answers. You're the overseer from Mampang. You can almost tell a sorcerer. Their eyes are rotten. Follow me. The boy talks uh, well above his age, and acts that way as well. He throws open the door and beckons to you. Hmm. He's, 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 this is not, this is not gonna go, he knows I'm lying, he knows I'm lying, otherwise he wouldn't act as well, uh, that way as well. You step inside the hot, smoky interior. It's a factory? The inside of the factory is filled with, uh, with a smoky yellow haze. About a hundred people are working away at workbenches. The sound of hammer strikes echo around the chamber. Oh, that's what the noise was. Uh, so, uh, let's look at the bench, pretend we know what this is all about. You look over one of the benches, it is piled high with chunks of stone. A few of the workers sort them by some criteria you cannot guess. Those they select are slid across the bench to a hammerer. The rejected rock seems to simply disappear. Okay, so let's walk, uh, watch the hammer, although... I think the disappearing rocks might be the ones they are actually choosing rather than the one that goes to the hammerers. Let's look at the disappearing rocks. In fact, it is not the rocks with dis... It is not the rocks which disappears, but the worker doing the sorting as well. They seem to flicker, reappearing a heartbeat later with an empty arm or fresh stone. Well, it's at the very edge of that. I wonder, it, wouldn't it be awesome if you could find like special places at the very edge of the of, of time and it would make for different encounters if he was at the edge, like three stances? That would be crazy. Uh, the boy you followed inside disappears into the murk. Uh, sure, let's talk to a worker. Uh, you approach a worker. Greetings, you declare. The creature promptly vanishes and reappears at another bench in the shop. One of the adults try to ease you aside. The boy rushes over to scold him, and he mumbles an apology. Uh, you try talking to another worker, but they also ignore you. It seems they are very focused on their work. Perhaps they are punished most dreadfully if they do not produce enough. The boy reappears at your side. Please, he says, indicating the door. You are distracting the workers. He moves you towards the door. But how do they work so quickly? You ask. The boy beams with obvious delight. You are pleased with our progress. I am glad. We will deliver the quantities required soon. Please. The boy opens the door and holds it ajar. You have seen enough. Are they making... What are they making? Oh, 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 oh. No, don't go there. Go to that outside. You step back onto the street. Looking back, you notice for the first time the roof of the warehouse sloping, but with several wooden beams that lean outwards, like ar open arms lifting to the sky. You gasp. The whole building appears to be a Grimalkin, like those you saw as an apprentice. Magical constructions which gather magic the way a funnel gathers rainwater. Surely not. No one would construct a Grimalkin on such a scale. It seems impossible. Lost in thought, you wander the street. Okay, so that I think... This is where I found the giant... It wasn't a giant. What kind of 
I don't even know. Let's go to the tower and uh, let's go up there. Yes, yes, everything is good. We need to go inside first. Uh, we are, are. Can we rest down here or not? Probably not. Um, and uh, metal cylinder sits. Let's uh, adjust the beam and we're all good there. Because there are things over here, but I don't think we're going to find anything else. Uh, we're probably not going to find anything e here either. Uh, I'm just going to see if there is. Uh, so climb down. Yeah, I just want to see if there's anything interesting down there. There probably isn't, but you never know. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, there's nothing. Okay, perfect. So, base of the tower, bottom of the tower, top of the tower. Yeah, because that way I can readjust this again. Just the beam, and I can shine this light upon the things down here. So, I want to see as much of the coastline as possible without actually breaking anything. Right there. And I hope it's going to be fine. Although, I probably should aim a little bit to this side. There it is. You adjust the beam around its track, sweeping the glow across the land. Yeah, let's climb down and continue with our journey. It's night time. We're not going to be able to sleep in here. That's kind of a bust, to be honest. Um, so, the low city. We have been there already. Or actually, we haven't. Please don't spend a day. Please don't spend a day. You leave the city by the old road. The stars are starting to fade. This is not a place to linger. Yeah. And the day is going to pass. You lost some maximum stamina, minus 2, lost significant gold, minus 13, explored the city of Tinpang, and we defeated the Earth Serpent. So we have now defeated three of the Serpents of Manpang. And we need still to kill time, the air, sun, and then the water, or something. In, not in that order, probably. You continue following the road. In the distance, the sun breaks over the horizon. Uh, the road begins to bustle with people who seem to emerge through the dust and mist and, rum and rumble past in their cards. Let's look at that, people. Of all the strange things you have seen out in the waste, this is the strangest. These people come from nowhere and go nowhere. And it's... Oh, wait a minute. They're actually ghosts? Huh. No, they can't be. And the same travelers pass by again and again, waving the same greetings down to you. You stride on through the crowds. After a few minutes, you encounter a small girl sitting on her own and staring into the distance. You go over to her and squat down on your ankles. Greetings, little girl, you begin. And the girl looks up at you sharply. You're in the wrong place, she says. Aren't you? Um, well, in a matter of speaking, yeah, you tell her. I can see it, she says. No one else seems to notice, but I can see it. What can you see? I think it must be a curse, she replies thoughtfully. Adults are so forgetful, they forget everything. Huh. I do not understand. She points up the road towards the great stone arch at the entrance of the city. When did they rebuild that? She asks. I have seen that arch, arch broken. You tell her. She nods. I knew it! Didn't I say? You're in the wrong place. I could tell by the way you were looking at people. Are you the one that stole my parents? Uh... I don't know. She shakes her head and then stands abruptly hitting you. She didn't hit me then, did she? I think you are. I can tell you are. No one else can see if you uh, see it, but you can. It was you, and I want them back. With that, she rushes away and is quickly lost in the strange mists. All is quiet once more. What did I just lose there? Oh, I lost. I lost stamina. Okay, that's fine. I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Okay, so she hits me for four damage. That's some girl right there. Uh, the road curves gently as you follow. The air stirs, and everything is good. No one stops to talk to you. Uh, and I'm not gonna go there. I'm gonna go to the lake shore. Please let me drag my guy. Thank you very much. You follow the road as it curves and bends, and finally begin to descend until it reaches the shores of the lake. All around it hustles and bustles. The area above the shore teems with stalls and shoppers, and at the waterline, fishermen tend their boats, putting the, punting them out into the water. In the distance, you can make out a tall tower rising from one of the lake's many islands. A few clouds turn in the sky. Okay, we got the shore over there, but I'm gonna go to the stalls, see what this is all about, if there's anything interesting in here. Otherwise, I might not even get anything. Let's see. On one side of the bay area from the waterfront is a line of stalls. Most sell food, real fish and fruit, though there is also a bottle seller selling the stoppered bottles. Ooh, that's nice, but we're out, we're out of time for the day. So I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.